Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. Welcome back to another episode of Hard Times, where I explore food and recipes from times of food scarcity. And today's episode is inspired by a recent impromptu trip that I took with my family for New Year's to Gettysburg. Now, Gettysburg is a site in Pennsylvania. It's the location of one of the most major battles of the Civil War. So when we came home, my boys were talking about Gettysburg, so we went to the library and checked out books, and I requested this book once again, and it's called A Taste of War by William C. Davis, A Culinary History of the Blue and Gray. And I've referenced this book once before when I made my heart attack video. If you haven't seen that, I'll put the link up above and down below. So this book is really, really fascinating because it approaches the Civil War from the perspective of food, which was so, so important. So many of the letters that were sent home, both from the Union and Confederate armies, talked about food and how much they missed food. It made me really think about how much food is a comfort, not only in terms of sustenance, but all the memories that are associated with the preparation and the giving and the sharing of the food. So quite poignant. So this is the recipe that I'm going to be making today, Confederate Hospital Toast Soup. Now the infirm or the sick were usually given more rations because of course they were not well, but oftentimes they didn't even want to consume them because they were sick. What soldiers were lacking both in hospitals and in the field were fresh fruits and vegetables. So scurvy was a real problem. Sometimes scurvy was alleviated with sauerkraut, which is a pickled or fermented cabbage. And while it worked to alleviate the symptoms of scurvy, oftentimes soldiers did not want to have anything to do with it. This is a really simple recipe. We're going to take a quarter loaf of bread and we're going to toast it. First lightly and then very darkly until it's the color of chocolate. Today I'm going to be using my toaster. I know that is not period, but I'm really more interested in just getting a sense of what this actually tasted like. I've toasted two pieces of bread here. I'm going to go ahead and toast two more. And I'm going to toast it for about six minutes to get it to this kind of dark brown color. I imagine the reasoning for toasting the bread is twofold. Number one being it'll add a little bit of nutty flavor. Number two, it's gonna give it some color, make it look a little bit more like beef broth or meat broth. I think one of the most important things I learned in this book is that many of the men, if not most, if not all of the men, did not know how to cook. Back in those days, it was the woman's role to prepare the food, to do all of the food preparations. So when a soldier was given a coffee grinder, he didn't know how to use it. When he was given a piece of salted pork, he didn't know how to cook it. So rations were given to soldiers. They carried them in little canvas bags called haversacks. And what they often end up doing was creating little, what they called messes, groups of six or eight men. One person was assigned to be the cook he wouldn't have to carry the pan which was oftentimes a cast iron pan that would be his kind of payment he wouldn't have to carry as much stuff during the marches besides preparing meals the cook also had to prepare the fires and had to do cleanup so you can imagine it was a lot of work two more pieces of toast so I've brought three quarts of boiling water to the boil and now I'm just gonna place my toast in there just like that It actually smells really good, like toast, just steamy toast. We're gonna let the bread soak, and when it's cool, it's ready to serve. It also doesn't indicate whether this should be served hot or cold, it just says to allow this to cool, and then it's finished. So, yeah, I think I'm gonna have it warm because I imagine broth being warm, but soldiers probably had it cold as well. I had no idea how important coffee was in the war, but it makes absolutely sense. When the soldiers marched, they had coffee. When the soldiers fought, they had coffee. When the soldiers retreated, they had coffee because coffee gave them the energy to do so. Speaking of coffee, here are a couple of recipes that I am really curious about. Yankee Instant Coffee Syrup, which is basically a condensed form of coffee combined with a syrup as a preservative. So you could just add a little bit of water and you would have instant coffee. The Union had so many resources while the South did not. So oftentimes the Southern Confederate soldiers did not have coffee, so they had to have some kind of substitute. So in here there's a couple versions of coffee substitutes as well. One recipe that I've seen referenced a lot is Skilly Galley, which uses hardtack and then you rehydrate it with water and then you pan fry it in some hot grease or pork fat. Alrighty, let's give our hospital toast soup a taste. It doesn't look all that appetizing, but I'm sure I've had worse. <laughs> so let's go ahead and serve us up some soup. I imagine you could have it with the bread or not. So I'm gonna try first just the broth, which actually has developed a nice light brown color. 
And it has some viscosity too, probably from the starch and the flour that's in the bread. Mm. Yeah. It actually isn't too bad at all. It tastes like crackers. It tastes like if you imagine if you took a bunch of saltine crackers or even oyster crackers and poured hot water on them. I was expecting this to be totally bland, but it really isn't as bland as I thought it was going to be. Yes, yeah, very plain. It does have some viscosity though, gratefully, because of the starches in the bread. So let's get some of the soaked bread pieces. See how that is. Now that doesn't look so appealing because it's kind of just squidgy in there, but let's give that a taste. Well, yeah, that actually is not good. I much prefer the broth. All the flavor that was in the bread has gone into the broth and all you're left with is this really kind of squidgy, almost like algae, Kind of texture really slimy and soft and really doesn't have any flavor left not very pleasant i would definitely just consume the broth mm -hmm. i think the broth would be even better with a bit of salt add some salt and that was a part of a union soldier's ration salt and sugar i know that this is a confederate recipe but i'm going to assume that the hospital had access to a bit of salt if they could all right let's give that a taste that's better marginally but it is better alrighty so there you have it confederate hospital toast soup a very plain and simple soup served to infirm and injured soldiers of the confederate army honestly I didn't expect this to taste very good I just wondered what it tastes like and I'm grateful that I did so so let me know down in the comments if there are any specific recipes that I mentioned in the cookbook that you'd like to see and if there are any other recipes you'd like me to test out or try also, if you missed the Hard Times playlist, be sure to check that one out as well. Alrighty, thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I hope you guys learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media. Like, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo. Take care. Bye.